Hello, uh, God's blessings to you this week as we hit another uh, of God's stories, one that really hits home for Christian educators, people who work with kids all the time. I'll go through the PowerPoint and then go through the Bible study as well. Uh, real fitting as this is parent-teacher conference time uh, because we see parents bringing their kids to us and a chance to interact with them uh, and to help them and not push them away like the disciples did. So the story begins with uh, from Mark chapter 10, Jesus was with his disciples and he was teaching and doing different things. And suddenly, uh, some people found out that Jesus was there. Uh, and sure enough, they showed up, but they didn't just come for adult instruction. They brought their little kids. And the Bible says little children. Uh, the Greek word brephe there means children carried in the arm. Uh, so infants to, to one-year-olds, that sort of age uh, was what the kids were being brought. Uh, we might think, well, how cute is that? Uh, and they, and they wanted Jesus to touch and bless their children. But the disciples kind of got in between and right away said, no, they, they, the Bible says they rebuked them. They said, get out of here. Uh, this is not your place, your time. This is not the priority. But uh, Jesus didn't think so. It says he was indignant. In other words, he was not happy with his disciples. Like they were doing the exact opposite. They had their priorities messed up. And he said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. In other words, bring them on. And it's not that they're second class. They're, they're, they're my children. They, they, the kingdom of God belongs to them. They're on top. In fact, he said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. They have the best attitude and faith. Elsewhere, Jesus held up little kids after the disciples fought about who had the greatest faith. And he said, this is the greatest faith. Uh, and that's what Jesus says as he welcomed those kids. And so what Jesus did, he, the Bible says he grabbed them, he put them in his arms, and he physically put them in his arms, and he blessed them. We don't know the exact words that he said, but he gave them a full blessing of being members of God's kingdom, the power of the Trinity upon him. That's our story. Uh, let's get to the Bible. So it's really short. Uh, it's really short this week, so uh, we'll be able to get through it pretty well today. So uh, this week is responsibility, God's power for you to be accountable to him and others accountable, especially when it comes to loving little children, something that we especially do in Christian school ministry. Um, I ask you, what do you like most about little children? What can annoy you the most about little children? Uh, maybe you love their playfulness, uh, the fact they can't hide their emotions, they can't lie very well, the fact that they just fall down, uh, uh, the sounds they make, whatever it might be. God wired our eyes to love what little kids are. That's why they're always so cute to us. That's why uh, even the worst people tend to feel a special spot for little kids. God wired us to be that way, but they can be annoying. They can take time and get in the way, and, and we can understand why the disciples might think, we got these things to do, little kids. Come on, we've taken big things, but little kids are big things. Uh, the term for, used for little children refers to children that are carried, zero to two. Uh, what difference of opinion do the parents and the disciples had? Well, it was priority. The parents thought, this is exactly who needs Jesus. That's what parents do. They're wired to do that. Uh, God wants them to do that. The top priorities, bringing them to Jesus. But the disciples thought, now we got bigger and better things to do. They had their priorities messed up. Uh, number two talks about how Mark 9, 42 says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, same term, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. Uh, what does this verse show about the spirituality of these kids, these little kids? Well, first of all, Jesus makes them a top priority. They're gonna, they would be smushed. Better to be, be killed than to get in the way of their faith. But also it says, those little ones who believe in me. It's not that they're innocent or that God just loves them because he loves them. The Bible says that we're sinful from birth. Psalm 51.5 says, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. These little kids are sinful. They need salvation. They need faith. But look, they can and do believe. By the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of God's word, these little ones can and do believe, even though they were in the arm. You don't have to wait till you're logical or can speak to have faith. Um, this verse shows they are able to believe and that's why we need to bring them as soon as possible and get them around God's word. Number three, what's the big deal of placing hands on them? Uh, the parents request to please touch them. And at this time, if you look back in Mark, uh, all kinds of miracles are happening where Jesus touched the people. A woman comes up and touches Jesus. 
people associated touch with being connected to him. Uh, that was how power uh, went out from him. They saw that. Uh, but still today, blessing and, and being tactile, and especially with little kids, isn't it true? I mean, look, if you're a kindergarten teacher, how many times you will touch a kid in any given way? That's why germs are all over the place. Uh, we do that. Uh, we do touch people, and that's a big deal. It's a way of conveying love and blessing. Uh, just last night, I was in the hospital visiting somebody, and what do you do? You, you touch their hand, you touch their forehead, you bless them by that, and it gives them extra comfort. Don't underestimate the, the power of touch. It, it's a love language, uh, but it also is a, a way of conveying God's love to everybody. Uh, verse 14, uh, number 4, what was Jesus' attitude about little children? Top notch. Coming on in. Top priority. Uh, it's my priority. I love them. Send them on in. Don't get in the way. Number five, many churches' ministries invest the largest portion of their budget on little kids. Maybe it's early childhood ministry or a school or, or their Sunday school or youth program. Uh, the question is, is that a wise way to spend those resources? Constant debate at churches? Because like 80% of the budget sometimes goes to kid ministry. Well, there isn't a magic amount, and it depends on your situation. But certainly this story says, yeah, it's worthwhile to invest our time. Uh, that's why it's such a great deal that people have invested the time and effort to have a Christian school, especially Christian elementary schools, uh, to get kids when they're little and early childhood ministries and K3s. Is that worthwhile? Yes, it is. It's worth our effort because it's, it's where God's Word often works first. Uh, and when you study it, it's really hard for people to come to faith when they're older. You've got to get it when they're young. Uh, number six, what does this story say to a Christian school and its teachers and parents? It says, be busy. Seize the opportunity. While kids are young, grab it. You're doing the right thing. You are Jesus' arms and hands here. You are the ones grabbing him and blessing him. Don't get in the way. Don't, don't drive Jesus to be indignant, but share that gospel message. Jesus died for you. He died for those kids. Let them know it now. Let's get eager at parent-teacher conference time. Let's work together. Uh, let's find a way to compromise so that kids get Jesus. Why is it necessary to receive God's kingdom like a child? Jesus doesn't say you have to be a child to get it, but you have to be like a child. Being like a child means that you humbly submit to not your ideas and not how smart you are, but, but you trust. Kids get it. They, they trust the, their adults and authorities, and what they hear, they just they submit to it. And that's what faith is. It's necessary to be like a child and say, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you be the father. I'm going to let you be the provider. I'm going to let you be the information giver. We all need to, in our faith, be like children. And forever we will be children of our God. How does this verse match our mission at our school? We set up, you know, let the children come on in. Make it, right now we're doing open enrollment. Come on in. Uh, let's not make it hard. Come on in. Let's, let's not put up barriers. Come on in. Our job is to work with the parents, to assist the parents, um, and to make it, it easy for them to come and hear the message of Jesus because Jesus wants to grab them and bless them. How can you apply this story to your classroom, your ministry this week? Well, first of all, celebrate that Jesus is grabbing kids and blessing them in the classroom, in the hallway, wherever you are, you're part of that mission, and to analyze what am I doing to get in the way of it, uh, and that your sacrifice and what you do and all that you give up is worth it for this. Jesus stopped everything to bless little kids. Uh, Christian teachers are called to give up so much to bless kids, and there's nothing really more worthwhile than sharing God's kingdom with anyone, but I think especially with little kids. And if you're a kindergarten teacher, I thank God for that. It's a big, huge pile of work, but thank God for that. I thank God for those people who have the gift to have the patience, who don't get frustrated, but welcome those kids on in. Christ College in character. Jesus shows himself to be the king, the Christ, but he loves his weakest subjects. He loves them. Uh, college, God loves educated people, uh, but that's not the core of faith. It's where those, you have to be like those little kids. And finally, Jesus was responsible and cared about those kids, and it's our calling to be responsible as well and not let the opportunity go. We're always one generation away from people not knowing anything about Jesus. Some ideas. Uh, have scholars spend some time uh, talking about what they do with little kids, their little younger brothers and sisters or babies, what they think of them. Uh, maybe you can make some pictures or messages to give to the younger kids, the kindergarten kids or the siblings. Maybe if you're older in your classroom, take some time to partner with the kindergarten classes. This week, have the 8th graders read a Bible story to the kindergartners, uh, whatever it might be. 
Uh, some questions for you. You can take a look at those times. Um, uh, but I think an interesting question for me is the last one. Why is it hard for adults to believe in Jesus? It would be interesting to hear what kids say about that. Well, anyway, may God bless us this week as this story washes over us. It just reminds us we are doing exactly what Jesus calls us to do. God's blessings to you. Have a great week. Have a great conference. Uh, and continue to work with those parents for our mission.